Father God, protect Zachariah and guide him, guide his footsteps uh, wherever he is today, and uh, keep us all safe. And thank you for your word, Father God, and just open our hearts to whatever you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I did uh, took some notes on why we should read our Bibles and witness to others, and we'll see just what God says about that and how it fits into what we're doing today in 2018. We're going to start in uh, the book of Psalms. And it's Psalms 1-1. One, one. Uh, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth shall pro prosper. So give, reading this book actually gives you a, a complete purpose and direction in life. A complete purpose and direction. Especially the book of Psalms in times of trouble. Uh, and, and, and notice it says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So if you're in God's word every day, everything you do is going to prosper. Everything you do. So Isaiah 55, 8 is our next verse today. And this is kind of interesting. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So the way we're supposed to do things that we think isn't God's way. And his thoughts aren't our thoughts. So if, you, if you've ever seen a street preacher, he's out there sometimes, he's preaching all day, standing on the street for hours and hours, quoting God's word. And we think, oh, that's weird. How can somebody do something like that? You know? But God's thoughts aren't, aren't, aren't our thoughts. Neither are, 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 are your ways my ways, he says. So reading God's book brings you closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to know him and his will for us. We don't know what his will is for us until he tells us. When we pray, we pray, there's one meter between God and man, me, man, Christ Jesus. We pray to God. When he answers us, he answers us from the words of the book. If we're not reading the book, he can't answer us. Sometimes, you know, someone will read the, the book to you and you'll get your answer in there too. But the best way to do it is just go to God yourself. So Matthew 22, 29. We're going to go to the New Testament now. See what he said there. Matthew 22, 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. So if you don't know the Scriptures, you don't know God's power. So the time will come that someone from another faith, including atheism, atheism is a faith, by the way. They really believe that there, God doesn't exist. But uh, God says the fool has said in his heart that uh, there is no God. Uh, they'll challenge you and even desire truth from you. When are they going to desire truth from you? And, and, and we need to be ready with an answer. And how can we be ready with, for an answer if we don't know anything about God's word? Because it's all in here. All the answers are in here. So you'll make a lot less mistakes and errors when you, know, when, when you read your Bible. So when trying to, to answer a friend or a family member or anyone that asks you a question about Jesus and what you believe, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. We need to know at least some, put some of the scriptures in our hearts so we're ready with an answer in another season. And then we're going to go back to the book of Psalms again because what we just talked about, Psalms 14. Psalms 14. Psalms 14. Because we're talking about atheism a bit there. Psalms 14. What did God say about these atheists today? Okay, today we're going to be reading from Psalms 14 the chief musician, Psalm of David, of course. The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. 
they are corrupt. They have done abominable. So God says these people are very corrupt. That's why they're saying there's no God. All works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looketh down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Now, uh, this last week, I, I went to get bread at a, a little shop, and uh, uh, Steve May was standing there. And I walked up to him, and I offered him a track. And he says, no, I'm good. And I said, good? Listen to the statement. Every word of God spoken out of your mouth has the same power as the words of God in his own mouth. There's none to do with good, no, not one, the scripture says. And he twisted his face and got all mad and he walked away. So even though this is some big apostle in, in, in Suriname, uh, he, he, he rejected the truth. Rejected the truth. When they gave him a scripture, he got mad and walked away. So trusting and reading this book, now I, if I wouldn't have known those words, I wouldn't have known what to say. So trusting and reading this book shows God you believe and seek him. It shows him you care and you want to do good. Because this is how God answers you. You want to hear his answers. It shows him that. Many, many of us want to show our loved ones how much we care, how much we love them. And that's great, you know. But... Have you neglected the Jesus that you claim to believe to them? Have you neglected him? They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy, God said. So reading and listening to the words of this book washes us clean. It keeps us clean. Yeah, our spirit, our soul, our soul stays clean. And then we're going to go back to the New Testament, John 6. John 6. It is the spirit that quickeneth the Flesh profiting profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. So reading and believing this book gives you the right spirit. You want, you want God's spirit in you, right? So you have to read his words. It gives you the right spirit. Or hear his words. You don't have to read them. There's tapes you can have and you can actually listen to God's word and it just fills you with his spirit. It's the right Holy Ghost. Not the Holy Ghost you're getting in the churches today. The, the, the one that makes you feel good and, and, and jump all over, the, all over the pews. It's the right Holy Ghost, which is also what King David asked for. King David asked for the right spirit because he knew he had married all these pagan women that were teaching him pagan things, and uh, he knew. And that's in Psalms 51.10. We're going back and forth a bit here, but that's okay. It puts everything in, in context. Psalm 51.10. Let's see what, what David asked God. Psalm 51.10. This is what David asked God because he knew what he was doing. It was just wicked. His spirit was foul. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So God, David actually prayed this to God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, James 4.4. 4. So David asked for the right Holy Ghost. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is at enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So reading this book will bring people you care about closer to the truth because you'll be able to give them his words. It'll bring, you, bring them closer to the truth. If you love, you love your friends, you love your family, you can bring them closer to the truth by witnessing of it. We need to witness of this book to them. Because they'll be really down and ask, you can say, oh yeah, read the book of Psalms, you know, Psalms 12. That, that has your answer. You know, it's just great to be able to do that. So, but first you need to agree with Jesus by reading and getting to know him. You need to read and get to know him. And then we're going to go back to the book of Amos. 
Amos. Is can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, how can we be agreed if we have a different Bible version? We can't. They say totally different things. We can't be agreed with, 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 with all these different Bibles going on. So, reading God's Word, which is a King James Bible for the English speaking people, shows you how He wants to use you for His purpose on earth. It shows you. God, that's how God speaks to us. And then we're going back to the book of James again. For Revelation. We're going to know where all the, the books are going back and forth like this. It's good practice. James 1, 22. James 1, 22. Now, a lot of people misuse this, this verse. I, I'm, I'm going to show you what, what God shows me, what it means. Well, what he shows you. James 1, 22. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And a lot of people tell you, oh yeah, doers of the word, you have to do everything Jesus did. No, no. Just what Jesus did when he is on earth is not the word. The word is from the book of Genesis to Revelation. So you've got to take everything in context and rightfully divide the scripture. So be very careful with men that teach this. So when we pray, we pray directly to God himself. There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We pray to God directly when we pray, directly. Of course, we do it, we say, through your son, Jesus Christ. Because there's only one way to the Father, that's through the Son. When he answers us, it's through the words in this book. That's how God answers you. Especially if you're all alone, man, and you're praying, you gotta, you're asking God something, he's going to answer you. But you're not going to hear a voice. If you're in a, hearing a voice, I'd watch out. If some really brilliant thing shows up at the foot of your bed, I, I tell it to leave the room. You go to this book, and this book will, will answer you. You know, his pure, perfect word. How can he answer you if you're not reading it? Maybe he'll speak to you through the hearing of the word. Absolutely, absolutely. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Absolutely. But are you listening to him, being a doer? And how are you listening to him? You read his words. Then we're going to go to back to Proverbs 28.1. Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So how can we witness and believe a book we don't even read? You're witnessing about a book. This is Jesus Christ on earth, the Holy Ghost. You're witnessing about this book that we don't even read? How can we witness about something we don't even read? Of course, we might have some words in our heart. We can witness with those. So God wants us to be bold as a lion and a good witness for him. That's what he's saying here. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Your good witness for him? Get some of his words in your heart. So why are we supposed to witness? Why are we supposed to do that? And that comes in the book of Matthew. It comes in the book of Matthew and Mark. So we'll be there for a bit. Matthew and Mark. And Matthew, verse 18. Let's see what God said here. Matthew 18. And of course, these would be the words of Jesus Christ himself. Matthew 18, 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So, if you're not reading this book, how do you find the witnesses? Okay. You got, of course, there's, there's physical witnesses you can have with you, and there's 500 witnesses that actually saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But if you, you don't read this book, how do you find your witnesses? Because every scripture has a witness to it, which proves it's God's word. But the New Bible versions, you can't do that. They took too many verses out. 
can't do that. Took, they took away the witnesses. Like, for example, uh, uh, Matthew 4.4, 4, uh, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They took out the uh, uh, Matthew, uh, Luke 4.4. 4. They took out the witness, took out the witness. The Old and New Bible version. So you don't have a witness to that scripture. So you, you think, oh, faith comes by hearing. But hearing comes by the word of God. They took that part out in, in, in Luke 4.4. 4. So without a witness, you don't have God's word. you got a false Bible. you got a corrupt Bible. And a corrupt Bible produce, produces corrupt converts. You don't want to produce corrupt... You don't want to witness to someone to lead them astray. So... Uh, if, and if you can't find the witness scriptures and give people a proper witness, you're not true to the God that gave this book to you. He gave it to you. He gave it to you. Okay, God's pure, perfect word. No copyright. We can just put this in a photocopy machine, print as many copies as we want. As we want. You can't do that with any new Bible version. You know, you go to jail. It's not legal. You can't just copy that book. They've they got copyrights on them. The King James Bible is the only book that doesn't have a copyright. You can make as many copies as you want. God put it that way. It was made by a king. Well, the king, the king ordered it. He didn't, he didn't make it. Then Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations. Then shall the, and then shall the end come. So how do we witness when we don't read what God wants us to say? got to read what God wants us to say, right? And then uh, go over to Mark, Mark 14. Next book over. Mark 14, 56. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. Wow. Their witness, you know, every new Bible version doesn't agree with itself. They agree not together. They're false witnesses. New Bible versions are false witnesses. This King James Bible will give you witness scripture that agrees with the other scripture. The new Bible versions don't need, not only don't they contradict themselves, they don't agree with each other. They don't agree with each other. And then Mark 14, 59. Go down to verse 59 there. But neither so did their witness agree together. There you go. There's our witness scripture in the King James. And it just shows that these new Bible versions, they don't agree together. So you, you, gotta, you got another Jesus. A new Bible version is another Jesus. The other Jesus, another Jesus, Jesus warned us about. So this is really, really interesting that all these new Bibles don't agree together and we've got this scripture that shows us about witnessing. So and then in Luke 24, Matthew, Mark, Luke, that's the next book over. Luke 24, 48. Luke 24. And ye are witnesses of these things. So we're supposed to preach into all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem, the Jews did, and they were supposed to go into the whole world. And ye are witnesses of these things. So there, there's another witness scripture. But we want to go to John 1 7. Let's go over to the next book here, John 1 7. Let's go over one page. John 1 7. It's the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. How many men? How many men did that scripture just say? All men. So if we've got a family member, if we've got a friend, if we've got an old friend, if there's somebody on the street that's hungry and we feed them, we should also give them a gospel tract. All men. We're supposed to witness to all men. So how many men all? It's our job to warn friends and family especially. I mean, our loved ones. Why would we not want to witness to them? So Acts 1.8. 
Now this gets really interesting. Now Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see? So once, once we're saved, the Holy Ghost comes upon us, we get power. And we're supposed to take it to the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's what we kind of do. We send gospel tracts to anybody, pretty much anyone that asks us. We'll send them gospel tracts. Make sure God's work get out there. So where's the power? We go to the book of Hebrews to see that. Where's the power? Go to the book of Hebrews. We're going to see where the power comes from. Because everyone says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, the power in the name of Jesus. Well, let's just go and, and, and see what God said here. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. Where is the power? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. Wow. So the power is the word. The word speaks to our heart. And, 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 and King David, he wrote, you know, I will, uh, I will worship in thy holy temple. I will hold thy word above all thy name. Above all thy name. So all the people worshiping Jesus today, they rarely mention the word. And God put his word above all his name. Above all his name. That's how important it is to read this book. If you say, I love Jesus and you don't know the book, this is. We don't need to know the word. And then we go back to Acts 26. Acts 26. Acts 26, 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So you're going to find that once you start witnessing, and if you're witnessing to people, you'll even, even presidents, even really great people, you're going to get the opportunity. God's going to put you right in front of their face. And you need to have some of his words in your heart if you don't have gospel tracts. Gospel tracts are much easier. God's going to put you right in their face to witness to them, the small and the great. So the poor that can't, can't even find any food to eat, to presidents of countries. God will put you right in their face. So if we're not reading this, how do we know what Moses and the prophets said? We're supposed to give them Moses and the prophets, not our thoughts. We give them Moses and the prophets. We give them God's words, which is what we have printed in the gospel tract. And then Romans 8.16. Romans 8.16. 8.16. There's a couple pages over here. Is the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, we're saved. We're the children of God. The Holy Ghost, it bears witness with our spirit. So this book will show you that you are his true child. Reading this book, it shows you you're his true child. True child of God. Then we go back to 2 Timothy. Go further in the scripture. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. Timothy, 2 Timothy 2. Two verse two. Yeah. And the things that thou hast heard of me, 
among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we're to speak these words to seek faithful men to teach others. And then Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Is, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Remember that. And teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Anyone hear water there? There's no water there? No. But teach all nations. Now, what's very interesting here is we're supposed to do this once you're saved. It's teach all nations. We're to be teachers. We're to be teachers of the word. We read the word and we teach others about Jesus Christ. And, and, and his word is more important than his name. Above his, we're supposed to put his word above his name. But the interesting is, thing is here, you go to any new Bible version, any new Bible version, and where it says teach all nations, they change it. They took that out. They took the word teach out and they put in the word make disciples of all nations. We were never instructed in this book to make disciples. We don't make disciples. That's God's job. All new corrupt Bible versions, all new Bible versions are corrupt. They took away and added to God's word. They're all guilty of Revelation 22, 18 and 19 and you don't want to be part of them. You don't want to be part of them. And then we're going to go, uh, let's not do God's job. Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So everyone has their own sin that, that they have to set aside. Something stopping you from witnessing. There's something that's just halting you in your tracks from going and witnessing. You just gotta set that aside and just reach out and pass someone a track. It's, and it's hard the first few times. You just gotta reach out and do it. So we're in a race to get God's word to the lost. We're, it's a race, guys. Because Jesus is about to come and take us away. If you believe every word of this book, and this is God's pure, perfect, pure, preserved words, he's coming to take you away. So we're in a race to get this out. And from, from the moment we believe this book until Jesus comes and takes us out, that's what we're how to held accountable for. So we're to witness to people. It's a race. And then we're going to go to Revelation 24. And this is really interesting because a lot of churches have taught us this in the past. And we're just going to let God teach us something here. Revelation 20, verse 4. And this is a very interesting scripture to know it, to know it. Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. So witnessing this word, going out witnessing these words. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their, in their hands. New Bible versions will say on their hands. In their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So we're talking about people here that are getting their head chopped off. The souls of men, the men that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. We're not going to get beheaded for the witness of Jesus. We could. But this is not for us today. This is for the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation after we're gone. But churches, if we just went to a church that, that taught that, oh, no, we've got to get our head, heads cut off. For no, we don't have to get our heads cut off. Not if you believe every word of this book. Not if you believe. And most churches are teaching this today. You go on the internet anywhere in the world and they're all teaching this. Oh, yeah, we have to go through the tribulation. You don't have to get your heads cut off, guys. Sure, there's people getting their heads cut off today's, today in, in Muslim countries. Because that's what Muslims believe they have to do to us infidels. So we have a choice. We can witness to our friend, our family member, or a stranger. Now. We can do it now. Or, if we're not doing it, 
And we don't believe this is God's pure, perfect word. We will go through the times of Jacob. And I guarantee you, you will do it then. You will do it and you will lose your head for it. You will do it because you'll know the truth. You won't have any choice. There's no way you're going to take the mark because you know better. So you're going to go out and witness and lose your head. So what do you want to lose your head for when you don't have to? Man, the time of Jacob's trouble, lose our heads. We know the truth to make us free. And we'll know it then if, we, if, if we're avoiding this book, God's word. We'll know it then and we will witness. And believe it or not, some of our friends will be cutting their heads off. They'll hate what we're saying. We don't want to go through that time. So Psalm 68, 11. Psalm 68, 11. Now we're going to look uh, more about how, how, how we can witness here effectively. Psalm 68, 11. Is the Lord gave the word. So the Lord gave us this book. We all got one in our hands. Eh? We've got God's pure, perfect, preserved word in our hands. Everyone sitting here today. And hopefully people out, out there that will see this later on. You got God's pure, perfect words in your hand. The Lord gave the word. He gave it to us. Great was the company of those that published it. What's this talking about? Those that published it? Published it? Does that mean the person that wrote this Bible, that published this Bible? That, that put all the words on paper and bound it and sold it to us? Or gave it to us? No. What, is, what they're talking about, it's not just the publisher. It's the printer that the company is. Great is the company. It's the, the printer and all who are involved in the process of getting this to the people. That includes us. When we take that printed track or that printed book, that Bible, that King James Bible, and we put it in someone else's hands, that's us. Great is the company. Great is the company. Getting God's words to the people. It's Proverbs 23. We're part of that company, and we're, and we're, to, we're to do our part. Proverbs 23, 23. Next book over. Proverbs 23, 23. <clears throat> buy the truth and sell it not these are God's instructions for us in the book of Psalms King David wrote all this down for us buy the truth and sell it not do you know when you go to a church they got a bookstore there and they buy these books at a very cheap price and, and volume and they sell it to you they're not following God's word those people are making merchandise of you they don't even know Jesus Christ Buy the word and sell it not. Any church selling you books or, or, or material is not a God. They're of a God, the God of the world. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Word to buy it. All those things and sell it not. So you know, you go to church, give your seed money and you'll be blessed and we're going to give you a word of wisdom today. It's all a false gospel. Got to stay away from those places. So this is why we give out these tracts. His word, free of charge. God told us to do this. Buy it and sell it not. And give them the wisdom and the instruction and the understanding. And also why we give out three King James Bibles. Anybody ask us one? Psalm 64. Just go back to one book. Psalm 64. 60 verse 4. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. And then uh, we're going to go to Psalms 89. Psalms 89, a few pages over here. Remember that word banner. Psalms 89. 89.23 And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Huh. Plague them that hate him. So we're going to be going back to the banner right away, but we have to go to this verse first. Plague them that hate him. So who are the people you give the word to 
that are hated by them. By them. You see, you give the word to someone, they accept it. They're hated by them. What is he talking about here? We'll go to John 17, but keep your finger here in, in uh, well, no, we're going to go to Isaiah next. So go to John 17, 14. John 17, 14. John 7, let's find out who, who's hated by them. John 17, 14. There's a lot of hate from the world here. Now, even though you passed that book or that track or gave that Bible to that person that was interested, John 17, 14 tells you what's going to happen. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. You see? Because once you give them the word, they believe, they speak to their friends and family, and they hate them for it. Because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Because once you give it to someone and believe they're not of this world anymore, they're going to get raptured up. They're going to get taken out of here for the time of Jacob's trouble. So we're not of the world anymore. Just as Jesus isn't of this world. He said he's not of this world anymore. And we're part of his body in Christ when we believe him. So once you are truly saved, you're not of this world. Anyone ever tell you, hey, it's like you're in another world? Yeah, you're not. You're not of this world anymore. Isaiah 13, 2. Now, remember with the word banner. Isaiah 13, 2. 2. What does God say to do with your banner? Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Remember Psalm 64 that I read? That was, uh, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. We're to display a banner. And how do we do that today? Well, we can have a banner. We can put it up. We can fly banners all over, all over, the, all over the... Or we can just give people a banner. Yeah, just give people a banner. Gospel track. Which we have in, in uh, many languages, of course, because there's lots of different cultures here. Then we go to Luke 14, 26. We're almost at the end here. Luke 14, 26. 14, 26. 26. Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, yeah, and also his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. So it's Jesus that makes the disciples here, you see? We even hate our own life to serve him. And we'll put our, our lives in, in jeopardy. We'll put our lives in jeopardy just to get his word to somebody. Maybe slip him a gospel track. So it's right there. So you can't be true to your spouse, your husband and wife, you can't be true to them when you read this scripture if they're against what God instructed us to do. Your parents or children. If you're not reading this book, you know, and, and as, a, as a responsible parent, we've got to be encouraging you and instructing you to read this book. Because this book's going to save your life. It's going to save your soul. Romans 10.4 and that's the last one we have for today. Romans 10.4. Romans 10.4. So God said it. I didn't say it. God said it. Acts Romans. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So we're not all preachers. We can't all preach. But you know what? These gospel tracts are little preachers. These are little missionaries. 
You pass someone a gospel track, this will convict them of their sins, and they can get saved from the words in this track. The track itself doesn't save them. Save them. God's words in this track will convict them and save them. So, if you don't know what to say to others when witnessing, just pass them a track. And we'll end this with 1 Timothy 4.2. 1 Timothy 4.2. 1 Timothy 4.2. And why, why should we carry these tracks with us? And in, in, in any languages available we have? It's 1 Timothy 4.2. Let, let God speak to us here. 1 Timothy 4.2. I'm 2-4. Four. 4-2. Four, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So God, Jesus has a doctrine. It's in these gospel tracts. And uh, you'll find uh, the gospel in, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. But you know what? Just keep a few of these with you and pass them out because God instructed us to do this. It's something that, that you want to do when you're saved because you read God's word and that's what he instructs you to do, to give it to others. Give it to others, especially if you care about people and love them. So Father God, thank you for this teaching today. And, and we know it's for all of us, including me. And uh, thank you for your pure, perfect, preserved words in, in, in your book, Father God. The Holy Ghost that you've given to sit with us here and and witness to uh, with each other witness with us in Jesus mighty name amen fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.